Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I would like to talk to you about the very fundamental system of with two degrees of freedom, which is a very basic uh, disposition of elements, which is a card and a pendulum, as the title, title says. So, let's begin with it. Here's the model, here's the system that we would like to model. It consists of a card which is free to move horizontally and it cannot move uh, uh, vertically. Now, and uh, it also consists of a pendulum, inverted pendulum, attached to that, to that car with a bob of mass m, small m, which can move around this pivot point given with an angle. This can be positive or can be negative if it is on this, if it is on this side. Of course, since the card cannot move vertically, uh, we can take any reference point and for simplicity we can have this pivot point as our zero distance from the our zero dis vertical distance and we uh, symbolize the vertical distance position of the pendulum as C2. The horizontal position of the pendulum is composed of the horizontal position of the card plus the displacement given by the angle and the length of the rod length L okay and uh, of course as an input force we can use uh, we can use as an input any force uh, acting on, on any side of the card so you can push it or pull from it, pull, pull it and it will move and of course it will affect this whole system it can balance okay so the first step we will need the kinetic kinetic energy of the of each part of the system and in the first step i will use the kinetic energy of the pendulum which is simply one half of the uh, oh, sorry of the cart one half of the mass of the cart and the velocity squared the velocity is symbolized using this dot so this is the kinetic energy of the cart since it cannot move uh, vertically it only contains the letter Y now for the pendulum we have the second the kinetic energy 2 is also one half of the mass of the bob times the horizontal velocity squared which is this the velocity of this at which this position is changing and we, s we add to that the velocity of the vertical position squared which is the velocity at which this position, the, the rate of change of this position, vertical position. Okay, now uh, these two position, these two velocities are related. These two velocities are related by this angle because they are not free to move independently. How are they related by these uh, conditions? As you can see, the the uh, position y2 is composed from y which is the position at which the card is and the sine of the angle times the length of the road which is L so we have this distance plus this little segment is equal to y2 and its derivative we just take the individual derivatives of each term and that gives us this. Also for the vertical position and velocity we have C2 is simply this uh, the length of the rod times the cosine of this angle and its derivative C point uh, C dot 2 is this expression here. The total kinetic energy is composed from the kinetic energy from the car plus the kinetic energy of the pendulum 
and that is equal to this part which is this kinetic energy which is before simply for the card horizontally and one half of this expression but this expression is related this, these two variables are related to these conditions so we have y2 squared which is this simply this is squared no so, sorry this is squared we have this and now we need c2 squared c dot 2 squared and we have this second term which is simply this part squared each, each term is squared okay now we have this total kinetic energy of the system and now we need the potential energy. The potential energy V is simply the mass times the gravity times the length of the rod cosine of theta which is the horizontal uh, vertical position of the bob of the mass of the bob in the pendulum. So we have total kinetic energy and the total potential energy and now the Laplacian, this this expression for the Laplacian is composed from the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. Of course, uh, we just do the subtraction here. It's very simple. We get to the this expression. Not so complicated. Okay, now the Laplace equation. Laplace equation is this, and it it deserves its own video because we need we would need to to derive that uh, and to find where from where this expression comes from but uh, for now we will take as given this expressions for the Laplacian each term here here are uh, are obtained by using this function L and applying the operation indicated in the derivatives and the partial derivatives. So for example if we take this term we would need to, to take the derivative of L using the variable Y. So I can calculate these terms and once you do the appropriate uh, derivatives we will get these terms. I will I will repeat here the equation just for clarity. We got this element is equivalent to this expression. As you can see, if you take the derivative of L using the variable y dot, this becomes a coefficient and using the power rule in this term and also using the power rule in this term you get these two terms and this can be it doesn't contain any y dot neither this term so they just uh, disappear also for in the similar fashion for the partial differen differential of L uh, in terms of the variable y this is zero because we don't have any expression which contains just the y everything disappear. This function, the partial derivative of L in terms of theta point, theta dot, is uh, this expression. As we can see here, once again, we can use here the power rule. In this term, it becomes this term. And here, this is this. And finally, this last expression, L, the, th uh, the partial derivative of L in terms of theta, we get this. Okay. So, once we have all these terms, we can calculate this, uh, these two expressions. So, you can write them and we can substitute them right now what we get is an expression like this. As you can see uh, we've just substituted e every 
every term and remember here we have a total derivative in terms of time so keep that in mind but once you calculate that you get two equations for the dynamics of the system at this point we can use this uh, two, exp two, two equations as our nonlinear model because this describes the dynamic dynamics of the system you can you, you use an input here and you have a behavior for that system it can be done and in fact in the, in the next video I will uh, use that model the nonlinear model but for now I will just uh, linearize this model using the properties of the cosine and sine functions because for small angles small enough angles we have that sine of theta is approximately theta and for small enough values for theta the cosine of theta becomes approximately 1 and the system simplifies to this expression using this, this condition or this uh, properties restricted that the, the angle is small we get this fun this uh, equation 8 becomes the equation 11 and the equation 9 become becomes the equation 12 so now we have the nonlinear model and the linear model and as I and as I've said before uh, we will have two set of videos one with the linear model and one with the nonlinear model okay so now we wa we would like to represent that system as a state space so we would like to get to the mat matrix form so we create our vector our vector x which is composed of y theta and its derivatives y dot and theta dot and uh, this simply represents the derivatives and uh, these two expressions 15 and 16 are taken from 11 and 12 these two once uh, once we use the symbols of, of the x vector becomes this expression we're just uh, solving for y two dots and we are solving for theta two dots like here if we solve for this and if we solve for that we would get these equations now this is our linearized uh, model and we can express that as a matrix as you can see uh, okay we have here we have dy dt d the theta dt d y dot dt and d theta dot dt okay one two three four we can express that as a vector x dot these four will be, will form our vector x dot and uh, of course this vector x is this and uh, we can express all these coefficients as a matrix A and of course when f appears that becomes our matrix uh, the coefficients for the terms where f appears that becomes our vector B or matrix B and u is f okay that's our external force that's our representation as I said before u equals the force which is external force and the representation we're looking for is this is uh, you can pause the video and take a pencil and some paper and check every step up until now because right now we're going to take a look at the MATLAB code to, to simulate this system okay